even when it comes to a digital signage uh, communication device whether it's a poster banner anything first you should understand how your audience is going to look at it see how it is playing a role in improving the product uh, the placement in front of the customer and improving the education of various products in, as far as customers are concerned when it comes to the led it's totally flexible okay. so it could go up to a kilometer size also that's the beauty about the led technology yeah uh, technology like software can get updated every second day every minute right. i can update right. it but i need a hardware which is ready for the next 5 years We have with us Mr. Nitesh Tatasiri, CEO and Managing Director of Burni Signage. Hello. Hello. And we have Mr. Pankaj Bellard, Business Head of Logic. Hi. Hi. So we are here to discuss all about digital signage. So first, Nitesh, the question goes to you. So can you please explain uh, to our audience what exactly digital signage is and how is it different from traditional signage? First, so, thank you for having me. Here. It's a uh, they don't want to be discussing this podcast with you all one of my favorite subjects and very close to my heart so let me to understand digital signage we need to understand uh, the two worlds in advertising today which is the online world and the offline world till internet came there was a thing called online world now what is the offline world anything that you do in communication in terms of advertising using posters banners tent cards hoardings all of these things are slowly and steadily moving from static formats to digital formats a shift into the digital format and the digital format is what we call as digital signage so that's what digital signage is in a very simplistic sense any format of communication using digital screens in the offline world posters or tent cards banners etc we call them digital signage so that's what it is so would you like to add on mr pankaj yes um, when it comes to signage so this concept is there for centuries now earlier it was uh, with the hand painted signs now over a period it has evolved in sophisticated yeah. manner and today we call it digital as you rightly said uh, uh, any content or any communication which we show it through a digital uh, hardware i mean when you can showcase about your branding advertising so that's called digital signage but uh, i would like to add one more point to make any digital signage more uh, uh, perfect way that you need uh, definitely you need uh, three things uh, one is the hardware mm. second one is the software and also the content and all three put together then only we can make it as a, a perfect digital signage okay that's great good to know so what are the key features and specifications of the display products that make them suitable for digital signage applications okay there are many ways in fact uh, the when we say display basically that's where the content has to be played uh, that can be of any form from a right from a small factor display to a large hoarding so it play i mean it, it varies from different sizes i mean right i mean nowadays i could see in a small restaurant it goes from 10 inch a uh, small screen where you can order from there to the distal hoardings now on, on the roads or on the highways or on the main roads you could see a lot of uh, uh, we call them as dovh distal out of home you could see so this is the hardware and uh, where we come in is uh, uh, we have the perfect product for every uh, application mm -hmm. so what i would recommend to people is that uh, whenever they choose Uh, out of these three hardware software and the content when it comes to the hardware choose a rugged one uh, which can hold the uh, i mean which can work seamlessly with the uh, this kind of a software uh, and also another point whenever people are using the lcd based uh, uh, hardware mm -hmm. so i recommend them to use anything which is on a soc mode which has got the capacity to hold the software as well okay All right next to you Nitesh so what are the key factors that businesses should consider when they select a digital signage uh, solution so are there like specific hardware software or content management systems so in any business uh, any any decisions that are taken you keep the customer or your audience first in mind mm -hmm. so even when it comes to a digital signage uh, communication device whether it's a poster banner anything first you should understand how your audience is going to look at it 
So where are they going to look at it from? So the proximity they'll be looking at it from. All that dis uh, factors uh, into the size, the resolution and the quality of the signage. Mm -hmm. So if you're putting your digital signage in a very brightly lit environment, then you need to ensure that the screen that you're using is very bright. Okay. If it is in a dully lit environment, comparatively, say for example, an office premises, mm. you don't need very bright screens over there. So a lot of things, so the audience, the, they, where they're going to see it, how are they going to consume it, that defines the hardware choice. Okay. And uh, good hardware uh, uh, is a first grounding note of ensuring that you have a very good digital signage system in place. You pick the right hardware, then you will be sure that the effectiveness of the communication is almost in its place. Mm -hmm. So hardware can be like Pankaj said, uh, anything right from small touch screens that you put up on a tabletop where audiences are sitting and watching or discussing with the salesman to a large digital hoarding that mm -hmm. you see on the large high streets. All of that uh, is de designed and defined as per the proximity, the distance they watch it and the quality of the resolution that they need. Okay. Uh, once you got your hardware sorted, for uh, then the most important part is your software that has to play the function of publishing the right content in the right hardware at the right time. So large organizations have thousands of retail outlets distributed across the length and breadth of the country. Uh, they don't want to use, have the same content strategy in every hardware. Mm -hmm. So you need a software that will be able to distribute your content strategy effortlessly across all these hardwares. So that's where the choice of software comes in. Is what are the softwares that you're using which will seamlessly, simply and uh, more importantly transparently tell you or displaying in each and every screen, or, uh, and it's pushing the right content in each and every screen. Right. There's a lot of complexity that goes into planning content release in thousands of screens. So you need to have a software that is that allows that understands the complexity and makes it simple. So picking hmm. the right software makes a big difference. The last part is content strategy. It is very uh, different today. We are in a world of hyper content now. Thanks to Instagram, TikToks, everything consumes <laughs> the content, uh, consuming content, thousands of reels of content you know, every day, if not every week. So you need to be very clear what message goes to them and where. Yes. So the content that you want to talk to a customer who's entering a retail outlet is, say for example, giving them a discount, saying that you're getting a better offer if you walk in right now. Mm. But once you're inside the store, you don't want to sell a discount. You want to sell the product, right? right. So you want to talk about the quality of the merchandise, the legacy of the company. So the content that plays in different parts of a retail outlet it's different. So you need to have a very intelligent content strategy that will bring the people, if I into your store, and ensure that they buy something and step out. And Digital Signage does the best job of doing all these things smoothly and seamlessly with the right mix of hardware, software, and content. Okay. So uh, can you share some examples or case studies that demonstrate how these digital signages have significantly improved the engagement? Definitely. Um, many of our customers are in the banking sector. Um, uh, we've always seen that uh, this is one sector where on an average of more than 1,000 people can come into a branch, the best branches, and sometimes it is as little as 100 to 100. All of these guys are uh, your customers, they, they trust your brand and they'll come to your branch uh, on, a day, well, on whenever they do, they, they come. What we've seen digital signage has uh, done is that it's improved their knowledge about financial products substantially. Uh, I can say that uh, one of our customers who is using digital signage to educate their customers, uh, their uh, walk-ins on how to use a mobile app better, right? It's, it's, um, if you look at it, you're an offline uh, entity is talking about an online product right. and promoting it. Correct. A lot of senior citizens who visit physical branches mm -hmm. have learned how to use mobile apps better by walking into a branch and learning about, oh, there is a mobile app which mm -hmm. you can use to talk to it. So. See how it is playing a role in improving the product uh, placement in front of the customer and improving the education of various products in, as far as customers are concerned. This is happening because they are spending a lot of time in those environments. Mm -hmm. Banking is one is such example. There are a lot of examples outside banking, in retail, in malls, everywhere. The knowledge about products is improving thanks to digital signage. And I think right. that those cases are growing by the day and a lot of people are seeing the benefits of that. Okay, so how does personalization and targeting play a role in digital signage? Are there advancements in data analytics and audience measurements? Absolutely. So, um, many digital signages, are, especially the best ones, they come in with an audience analytics modeling. Mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. uh, where you are able to understand who your audience is who's watching the content so you can uh, like when you use body signage you can easily uh, opt for an option where you can understand what is the age gender and even the mood state of the audience okay. uh, look at that kind of data mm-hmm. this kind of um, uh, 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 data was only a privy in the online world so facebooks and all the uh, other online applications when they talk about advertising they could tell the advertiser saying that you have a particular target audience in mind i can tell you exactly where to find them we may have female children and give content uh, publish a content right in front of them today the offline world is challenging that say that we are also not uh, any less than you are so with the help of the right technology you will know exactly who's seeing the content and right. then you can customize content for that audience at the right time so using audience analytics or viewer based players many companies call it if a woman of a particular age group comes in front of a particular screen you can only play women related content or a child content can be played only when a child is in front of the screen right. that's a kind of personalization that's already happening in digital signage uh, we are leading that in various markets in india and the future taking that is where the ai comes into play so when you're able to predict a particular audience movement in a particular environment automatically the right product is placed over there so that's the beauty about it so you don't have to wait to see who's seen your ad you know who's going to see your ad and the right content of your right product is already talking to them that improves the roi substantially and various mm-hmm. other things for the marketer okay so pankaj uh, what is the range of display size like and form factors available in your product lineup so uh, how do you ensure scalability and flexibility there okay when it comes to the signage mm-hmm. as i was saying earlier the e uh, range starts from right from a very small in size display right from 10 inch it's like just like a tablet right. and it goes up to uh, it's totally flexible when it comes to the led it's totally flexible mm-hmm. and uh, when the technology and hardware comes in then there are a lot of uh, uh, technology like lcd based mm-hmm. displays and the led based displays when it comes to the i mean people call it as with a different name uh people call it as active led or direct view led mm-hmm. but when it comes to the lcd right now what we have at logic is uh, it starts from 43 inch and goes up to 110 inches okay. in 16 is to 9 format and also we have got some uh, unique application based 21 is to 9 format it's like ultra stretch people can use it on the landscape mode or the vertical mode portrait mm-hmm. mode mm-hmm. that's 105 inches and then uh, when it comes to the led it's totally flexible so okay. it could go up to a kilometer size also that's the beauty about the led technology we have done a very huge installation when it comes to any outdoor holdings it could go up to right now also we have done one recent project actually it's more than 25 meters by 20 meters it's pretty huge one that's amazing so, so yeah. it's totally customizable mm-hmm. so which are like basically a uh, little technical oriented ip based ip 65 66 space okay. if you want to use it uh, on the outside environment mm-hmm. so you could use it as the holding or you could use it as the nowadays even uh, i was seeing in some of the uh, bus stops mm. uh, yes, yes. modernized so, bus stops right. even they are using the displays yeah we are it uh, the buses as well yeah inside <laughs> the buses now with in those bus stops i could see these uh, bus timings as well yeah. so even there oh, also yes. the displays are yeah. so now we also have the outdoor uh, lc kiosks mm-hmm. so uh, so that's the age what we have got today yeah that's beautiful so nitish in terms of integration with other technologies such as artificial intelligence and uh, internet of things so what opportunities exist for digital signage to enhance customer experiences so The, the opportunities are uh, l- just limited to your imagination. <laughs> so, if you <laughs> want to do something exciting, innovative, you can use AR, VR, and do digital signage. Um, see, the entire intention is to grab customer uh, um, attention. Um, yes. So, for example, we were working on a project where uh, there was a petrol pump, mm-hmm. and where they wanted to communicate to the petrol pump audiences who drove into the petrol pump on. in terms of what uh, are the various other products available for them to mm-hmm. choose from uh, but we don't want to distract the audience from knowing what is ex- exactly being filled in the fuel mm. so what we did is that we worked with the uh, dispensing unit manufacturer as well as uh, the uh, the petrol pump com- entity itself and we got mirrored that entire dispensing fuel dispensing data on the digital screen okay. we split the screen into two parts the mm-hmm. top part of the screen showed them exactly what is that they are buying in terms of the fuel 
uh, quantity of the fuel, the price of the fuel and all that data in real time. Mm -hmm. So if he looks at the dispensing unit or he looks at the dis digital signage screen, the data is identical. Okay. At the same time, at the bottom of the screen, we use that to talk to them uh, about the various products that the fuel pump is offering and so on and so forth. Uh, we can we went a step further because uh, we are able to read the uh, the number plate of the vehicle using cameras placed over there. Uh, and we know in our loyalty program that number plate belongs to customer X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. So we can easily greet that customer saying, welcome to a petrol pump. We're good to have you after so many days or so many weeks. Right. And we can <laughs> say that you have so many loyalty points and you can now redeem it. Okay. Now, the very thin line there is what is privacy? <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Correct. So it's as I said, we, uh, there is infinite possibilities. Uh, but it's a choice that you need to make in terms of what you want to talk to your customer how much privacy lines you want to d define right. and how do you want to keep them engaged. All these three things will help you pick all the AI tools available in the market. We are in an era of technology where nothing is impossible. So putting all of that is seem easy today to deploy in digital signage and that's what you're seeing today. Right. I think that's something interesting what he raised. The fuel stations, you mentioned half of the screen is for the that meter what it yeah. runs and the, the other half is for the content. We know that the customer who is fueling his car He's going to stop there for one minute, two minutes. They yes. spend almost four and a half minutes staring at doing nothing. <laughs> and that's the best time. I mean, he has to look at this clean. I mean, yeah, so, in fact, they appreciate that, you know, because that's one of the time where you don't feel like you're looking at a mobile phone. So <laughs> there is any knowledge coming there. Yes. It's a, it's, it's gold, min gold minutes, as I call it, for advertisers to talk to them. Yeah, so, maybe you should say uh, the advertiser should definitely come there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, the, so. This is one such example where we can, where you can use AI, where you you can uh, understand the uh, local requirement of the audience. When I say local is in that particular moment in that particular place, and customize content which is relevant. There. When audiences see content that which is relevant to them, they will pay attention. You can't just if you put gibberish, they will just look away. Right. So at the end, so these tools are you can if you if thought well and used smartly, to bring a lot of customers' attention to your screens. And that is again going to help you in your ROI in one day or the other. That's amazing. Okay. So finally, uh, Pankaj, can you share any advice or recommendations for us as a display brand owner to successfully pitch our displays alongside digital signage software companies? Yes, of course. Uh, Ditesh is also my friend uh, <laughs> who owns the software company, the oh, signage yeah. company. Uh, usually we work together also. And uh, what I recommend, uh, especially to the signage software companies, is that uh, they should choose a brand uh, or maybe a product, not only brand, but at least a product which has got a uh, a system built in with the minimum capacity because any software to be hosted on the display, you need minimum space. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you are bound to depend on some third party devices which are out of the displays. Okay. And maintaining two, three devices for any software guys or the even the integrators becomes too difficult to manage. So what I recommend at least uh, for the software uh, to run any application, the minimum size of MB so maybe mm -hmm. the RAM space is required. Okay. So I recommend to the people that uh, they should uh, choose a brand or the product which has got the at least uh, good capacity uh, of the memory in the display built in so that you can avoid having a one more device for that. And then more rugged uh, mm -hmm. nowadays, the length uh, I could see a lot of uh, earlier, it was more of a a landscape kind of an installation. But today, the contents are totally inflexible. Yeah. People put it on a, a mm -hmm. portrait mode, also the landscape mode, yes. and display which has got the capability to do all those things. Right. So that is something I recommend. Yeah, I would add to that because you know customers should understand that um, the hardware that they buy is an investment for four to five years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, technology like software can get updated every second day, every minute right. I can update it. Right. But I need a hardware which is ready for the next five years. Because you pay for the hardware once, you can. Uh, the software is a subscription model which you feel, uh, which you can improve the performance and keep updating it from time to time. So we insist, uh, and we tell our customers, like when you buy your own post personal mobile phone, you buy, buy the latest version. There's a reason for that, because it gives you a greater hardware spec which will support future applications and future technology improvements substantially, at least for the next four years, if okay. not beyond. Uh, so the same rule applies when you pick your hardware today also. You, if you look at the best hardware, they come with better better memories, they come with better processing powers, all of that. When you go for that, then you rest assured that your investment is holding good for at least four years, if not more. Mm -hmm. So like 
what Pankaj was stressing about is customers should understand that as much as they understand what screen looks good in my mm-hmm. premises, right? So we, we do in, 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 uh, tell our customers that please make sure that you buy hardware which is not more than a year old in terms of hard technology mm-hmm. because anything further than that you are reducing the usage of that by that many lesser years. Yes. Let's use it. Just think about how you buy your own personal food. Yeah, that's right. 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 So right. the same way you have to look at your hardware as well. Right. Even if I have to buy a phone, I'll make sure that I buy to the latest one. Otherwise, Absolutely. You are going to buy to the latest Now and then these devices yeah. get updated. And because many or very often what happens is um, uh, you're forced to, to look at your books and your economies and you end up buying a hardware which is economical. <laughs> But what you don't realize is that you're taking three, four steps backwards right. in the process right. of buying it. So that is a very important decision to make. Uh, purely in lack of awareness makes them make these mistakes. But the more you start thinking about it, the more you start investing yourself in a in a more business model, which is critical to your business, you'll understand these things play very important. Right. Okay, so in your opinion, what does the future hold for the digital signage industry? How do you foresee it in the next five to ten years? Oh, uh, so um, future is always unpredictable. <laughs> uh, we are all seeing, uh, we're all getting uh, uh, completely impacted by AI tools like ChatGPT mm-hmm. and all that. I see the future of digital signage also going f- further into the AI models. Um, we have, we've heard about mid journeys which can create uh, video content, image content uh, by just taking instructions in terms of what is your objective. And it gives you a beautiful uh, image or a beautiful video for that matter. So all these AI tools uh, will start integrating into digital signages um, as a software. Uh, I also see in the next two to three years where uh, only objectives are typed into the system and the content is generated and published to the right person at the right minute because you have the tools to know who's watching the content. You have the tools to create content in seconds, yes. if not even faster. <laughs> so when all of those technologies are coming together, the smartest machines are the ones who will understand which works faster, which works easier, and which works in a more relevant manner to the customer. And when you put them together, you'll be, I think that's where the future is in terms of the uh, digital signage software and hardware way. Yeah, I'd like to just add one mm-hmm. point. Uh, forget future, uh, if it's present actually. Yeah, even <laughs> in present uh, scenario, nowadays on the weekends, I, I go to uh, a lot of these malls and all. I've, ch- I've seen a lot of changes when mm-hmm. compared to the COVID of Pre-COVID area. COVID. Yeah. yeah, and then when I see now, every, uh, e- not only the retail merchandisers, in fact, when you see the, the food courts of those malls, no. I went to Mendy recently, I had to order on a digital they're, they're using a digital kiosk, kiosk. Exactly. absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. then, uh, yeah, you have to use the digital kiosk. Yeah. You go to QSR segment, I mean, especially the quick serving restaurants, any right. QSR. Earlier, it was more of uh, uh, flex boards wherein people used to have their menu and all, but today, yes. Oh my God, it's totally digital, totally <laughs> digital. And, uh, and people wants to find a new ways. And mm. even if I have to take Bangalore as an example, I could see a lot of, forget the mall restaurants, even a uh, couple of other restaurants I could see mm-hmm. nowadays, which are more popular in the Insta and all. Mm. Wherein people, the same concept of MACD, people mm. wants to implement it there. And mm. there so so uh, just go there. Uh, order on I mean usually these counters are full so people come up with the new ideas right. how people can order from the phone from the digital kiosk uh, kiosk available there and it goes directly the order directly goes to the yes. uh, chef in the yes. uh, kitchen and then he uh, uh, creates a token and then comes to the so yes. it's all uh, formatted well yes. so this is possible with the uh, power of digital signage and uh, this is the situation today I could definitely see there's a huge potential when it comes to the technology and there are more ways to create the content and uh, more catchy contents can be created using the technology and uh, if you have all three these things the hardware the software and the content in a perfect place then i think there's huge opportunities for everyone especially the end customers i would say i was sad you know uh, if you look at it uh, as as a human race today we got so much of technology around us Technology is actually competing with technology, right? <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so, so uh, why do we adopt technology as a business to start with? For two things, effectiveness and efficiency. So we want things to work better and work, uh, at, a, uh, and work at a lesser cost or save us more effort. Uh, so whether it's chat, uh, GPT or all the other AI tools that we are, we are talking about, they all will do that to the businesses as well. Yes. So even... Uh, when we see digital signages, we seeing that efficiency and effectiveness, uh, the, the methods that you are uh, deploying, uh, the 
the tools that we are creating going into the future using all these uh, AI ML uh, models is only to make content more effective and uh, the distribution and the management of content more efficient. At the end of the day, it all has to come back and talk to the ROI of the company saying that are you doing, are you getting more than what you're investing in it? And that's what it is all going to be. Right. So we can have an unlimited conversation about digital signage, but I think we're going to wind up for now. Uh, it was great uh, talking to you, Nitesh and Pankaj. Thank you. Thank you very so much. thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. 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 Thank you.